Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your Wednesday evening to be a part of our time together tonight. I apologize up front here for the technical difficulties, man. I tell you, once you think you've got this stuff figured out with uh, Facebook and the way all this uh, streaming works, uh, they change it up or something changes. But anyways, praise the Lord, we are uh, are streaming now and we'll give folks just a few minutes to join on and be a part of our time together tonight. Normally what I do is I'll set these events up uh, in advance to start at 6.55 and at 6.55 I'm waiting for it to kick off and for some reason, it's not firing. So uh, anyways, we'll get all that figured out. But let me point out a couple of things that are happening that we want you to be aware of. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on these, but just a couple of things. Uh, be in prayer for our services this coming Sunday, a very special day for us, Resurrection Day. Uh, but not only is April the 4th going to be Resurrection Day, every day is Resurrection Day. Uh, we proclaim the gospel every Sunday, and uh, this is just going to be a special Sunday for us to do just that two services. Uh, the first one will be at 7 a.m. That'll be a, a sunrise service. That'll be on the front lawn. So I hope you'll come and be a part of that. If you want to bring a chair, uh, feel free to do so. You don't have to if you want to stand. It's not going to be uh, the length of our uh, uh, 11 o'clock worship service. But if you want to bring a chair, feel free to do so. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'd encourage you to do that. And uh, again, that'll be at 7 o'clock. Then our 11 o'clock service will take place in the sanctuary. Looking forward to both of those times together. Let me also invite you to uh, to click the link that you see there on the screen. You won't actually be able to click that link, but I'm going to post that in the uh, comment section right now. This will give you the ability to uh, update your uh, Facebook profile picture. And uh, we've created this uh, neat little uh, way for you to be able to uh, advertise and let folks know uh, what's happening at the church. So I'm posting that in the comment section right now. You can feel free to go back and, and look at that later, but I did want to mention that because I thought that was pretty neat, and it'll just uh, add that to your profile picture, and you'll be able to uh, just share our Easter, serv uh, Easter services that are taking place this coming Sunday. Also, let me uh, mention to you tonight um, that we are in the process of uh, ordering some shirts. I know that there's been a number of folks that have asked or inquired about shirts. Uh, I ordered these uh, just personally uh, I guess over a year ago, but I've got one on right here. Uh, if you want to see, this is what it looks like. I'll slide back here. This is the, uh, I think this is the royal blue. Is that right? Uh, yes, this is the royal blue that I've got on. But uh, if you're interested in a polo shirt, they're super nice shirts. The colors that they have are the ones that you see on the screen there. And, uh, oops, the ones that you see on the screen there. And you can just click on that link. And you can order one of those shirts. And again, I apologize for the... Um, I'm, I'm multitasking majorly tonight with what I'm, I'm trying to do here. I've got a lot to, to cover with videos and with uh, all of that stuff. So let me post this in the link in the comment section there as well for you to check out. All right, so that's uh, polo shirts. They're available. And then let me also mention... Let's see... What else we've got here? Uh, that's it. That's all the announcements. All right, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, on the, the announcements tonight. A lot of this stuff um, you're more than well aware of as to what's happening within the church. And uh, I do want to point out one other thing here as we begin our time together. Uh, let me say thank you to uh, all of those who made this past Sunday possible. Uh, don't want to call out names because I'm sure to leave somebody out, but for everybody that helped with uh, our worship service this past Sunday, we had a wonderful time of worship Sunday morning. Uh, then we had uh, the Easter egg hunt on Sunday afternoon, and the Lord gave us good weather for that. And uh, thank you to everybody who helped with that, to put that together. It was so wonderful to see all of our children uh, come together again. So we did that outside, and uh, it was just a great time to be together. So uh, thank you to everyone that helped with that and participated in that. And we're grateful for the, the children and the families that God's blessed us with here in Pine Level. And then let me also say a very special thank you to everybody who helped with the Journey to Easter service. The Journey to Easter service was uh, Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. I'm going to post uh, right now while I'm speaking, so I don't forget about it, The uh, a link to the Journey to Easter service. If you did not get a chance to view that, I would highly encourage you to go back and watch it Uh the audio and video team did a, a wonderful job in being able to uh, use a spotlight and uh, really uh, 
showcase for you each of the windows and uh, it'll it'll really tie in neat with what we're going to be looking at tonight but if you get time to go back and watch that I would uh, definitely encourage you to do so. Then let me also mention one other announcement, and that is uh, anybody that's interested in playing softball this year, our church will be practicing at uh, the Pine Level Park on April the 10th at 2 p.m. So if you're interested in playing softball, uh, if you can uh, either contact uh, Cliff Holloman, I know he'll be happy to help you with that, or you can just show up at the, uh, the field on April the 10th at 2 p.m. All right, let's... Uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer and pray for our time together tonight, for our services that will take place Sunday. Also, if you'll continue to remember the uh, Brandon Baldwin family and uh, Mr. Graham and Miss Brenda Pickett, their family, I know they would appreciate that. Let's pray and we'll jump right in because we've got a lot to cover tonight. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have once again to be able to come together and to be able to spend a few moments studying your word. What a, a special time we have tonight as we uh, look at the Passion Week and uh, as we're reminded of uh, all that Jesus endured and all that Jesus suffered and all that Jesus uh, went through while he was here on earth. And I pray as we uh, spend time together tonight studying this, Lord, that you would just give us insight and direction. Lord, I also pray by chance if there's someone watching tonight that does not yet know Jesus in a real and personal way, I pray the things we discuss tonight will open their eyes and their hearts to the truth of your word, that they'll turn from their sin and trust Jesus with their life. Lord, I pray for believers that they would be encouraged as we reflect on what Jesus did the last week of his life here on earth uh, before he died on an old rugged cross. We love you. We thank you tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, if you did not have an opportunity to download the uh, study guide, I'm going to post that in the comment section as well. Got a lot of stuff I wanted to post there just so you would have it readily available this evening, but I would encourage you to go back and, and do that later if you've not done so already but I'm posting that in the comment section right now. And while I did that, I uh, saw another prayer request. If you'll pray for Carolyn Pate and her family. This is a family that John and Valerie Thompson uh, met as they were doing the Bible distribution uh, this past Sunday. And uh, if you'll remember that family in your prayers, I know they would appreciate that. Uh, thank you for sharing that too, John. I was hesitant in mentioning that tonight with it being broadcast online here, but I'm glad that you did. We want to pray for that family, for Carolyn Pate, uh, locally here in Pine Level and for her family. So remember that, if you will. All right, if uh, if anything goes wrong as we're moving through this tonight because I've got audio and video and a soundtrack and all of these different components that I'm trying to pull together tonight uh, to to do this and, and hope, hope that it'll be done well. But if you experience anything on your end with the audio or the video not working, if you'll just comment there and let me know, that would be great. And then also, before we jump in, if you will also, in the comment section right there, just put your name. Just say, hey, hi, I'm joining you tonight, or I'm joining you from Pine Level, or wherever. That way it'll let us know uh, who's joined in to be a part of our study, because that's really the only way we can tell who's watching. So if you'll do that for me, I would greatly appreciate that. And uh, let's jump right in. So the Passion Week, we're looking at and remembering uh, the life and the death and the, be uh, the burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The picture you see there on your screen is uh, an aerial, not an aerial picture, it's uh, somewhat of an aerial picture, but anyways, it was a picture that I took of the city of Jerusalem. I'm standing atop the Mount of Olives, and uh, what a wonderful uh, scene to be able just to take in and to be able to, uh, it's breathtaking, to be able to stand there on the on top of the Mount of Olives and to be able to look right there at the city of Jerusalem. So this was on my trip that I took to Israel in 2015. Uh, my wife Heather blessed me with a trip, and uh, hopefully, Lord willing, in the near future, uh, we'll be able to take a trip uh, and lead a trip here to Jerusalem. I would love to do that, and I know we've had folks that uh, were interested in doing so before the COVID stuff uh, uh, began, but uh, hopefully we can do that in the near future. All right, so this is uh, zoomed in just a little bit. You can see the uh, the Temple Mount there, the Dome of the Rock is what you see, the, uh, the Golden Dome there. And uh, then the next slide, I've just labeled this for you so that you'll be able to, to see what each of these pieces are that we're looking at. So standing atop the Mount of Olives, you see the uh, Temple Mount there. And then also, just to the right of that, you see the Eastern Gate. Now, the Eastern Gate is sealed now. 
But uh, this is believed to have been the gate that Jesus would have entered through uh, on uh, the Sunday, Palm Sunday, as he rode into Jerusalem and they were uh, shouting Hosanna and everybody was in love with Jesus and they thought he was the greatest person on earth. And my, how things changed in just a few short days. But also you'll notice here from atop the uh, Mount of Olives, the Kidron Valley, and this is really, really neat. I, I say this anytime I talk about my trip to Israel. What it really helped me with is to be able to put things in perspective. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, it's all right there. I mean, you're on top of the Mount of Olives. You're looking down in the Kidron Valley. You see the Eastern Gate. You see the Temple Mount. You see the city of Jerusalem. So just a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful sight, a wonderful trip. And again, uh, this is like the trips we've taken to Alaska. I can show you a picture of the landscape in Alaska and the mountains, but it's just not like being there. And uh, it also ties in well with what we're able to do now. I mean, we're able to do all of this via uh, social media and uh, have Bible study and church via social media, but the same is still true when you're able to come into the house of the Lord and worship. I mean, there's nothing like that. So uh, I was thinking about that as as I was, was sharing this. So uh, there's a close-up uh, down from uh, in the just down below in the Kid, uh, Kidron Valley. You see the Eastern Gate there. That's a close-up picture of that. And uh, got that labeled there. Uh, what I want to do now is just uh, go through and read the scriptures. If you've downloaded the uh, study guide, what I'm doing is, and I've done this for a number of years. This is a uh, an outline from uh, Dr. Harold Wilmington, and uh, from Wilmington's Guide to the Bible, and I've used this for, for, for years, and, and I like the way that it's laid out. Uh, we're not going to be able to look at all the, the, the fine details of what you see on the handout there, but I, I think he does a good job laying this out and helping us to have a, a good understanding as to uh, the final days of, of Jesus' ministry here on earth. Now, I know there, there may be some slight differences if you are to look at some of the other outlines, and that's okay. I mean, uh, this is just a good general overview of those events that took place and trying to align those with the specific days of the week. All right, so let's jump right in and look at what the Bible says in John chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 11, and we are on Saturday. Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him supper there, and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume of, nar of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, who was intending to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to poor people? Now he said this, not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief, and as he had the money box, he used to pilfer what was put into it. Therefore Jesus said, Let her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews then learned that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. But the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him many of the Jews were going away and were believing in Jesus. Another aerial view here, uh, just to put this in perspective, you see the Mount of Olives, that's where I was standing taking the picture, the Temple Mount to the left, and then you have these two towns, uh, Bethphage and uh, Bethany, just to the right of that, just a short distance away. Now we're going to watch a video that pertains to Saturday. These videos are taken from the Jesus film, so direct your attention to the video, if you will. Six days before the Passover, Jesus went to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from death.
They prepared a dinner for him there, which Martha helped serve. Lazarus was one of those who were sitting at the table with Jesus. Then Mary took a whole pint of a very expensive perfume made of pure nard, poured it on Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The sweet smell of the perfume filled the whole house. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas Iscariot, the one who was going to betray him, said, Why wasn't this perfume sold? For 300 silver coins. And the money given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He carried the money bag and would help himself from it. Leave her alone. Let her keep what she has for the day of my burial. You will always have poor people with you. But you will not always have me. A large number of people heard that Jesus was in Bethany. So they went there, not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from death. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus too, because on his account, many Jews were rejecting them and believing in Jesus. Jesus. All right, we move from Saturday to Sunday, the triumphal entry from John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. Beginning in verse 12, here the Bible says, On the next day the large crowd who had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him, and began to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Even the king of Israel, Jesus finding a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things the disciples did not understand at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things to him. So the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify about him. For this reason also the people went and met him, because they heard that he had performed this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are not doing any good. Look, the world has gone after him. Now for the video for Sunday. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! God bless the King of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the scripture says. Do not be afraid, city of Zion. Here comes your king, riding on a young donkey. His disciples did not understand this at the time, but when Jesus had been raised to glory, they remembered that the scripture said this about him, and that they had done this for him. The people who had been with Jesus when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from death had reported what had happened. That was why the crowd met him because they heard he had performed this miracle. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, 
We are not succeeding at all. Look! The whole world is following him. All right, we move on to Monday. Monday we have the second temple cleansing, the cursing of the fig tree. The picture that you see there is me sitting on the southern steps of the temple. What a wonderful sight that was to be able to, to, to sit there and to be able just to take in the scenery. So we moved from the Mount of Olives over into Jerusalem there at the Temple Mount, uh, seated on the southern steps. The scriptures, Matthew 21, verses 12 through 17. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all those who were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant, and said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read? Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. Verse 18 says, Now in the morning, when he was returning to the city, he became hungry. Seeing a long fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said to it, No longer shall there ever be any fruit on you. And at once the fig withered. Seeing this, the disciples were amazed and asked, How did the fig tree wither at all at once? And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. And all things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Again, that's a picture that was taken from the Mount of Olives, a close-up of the southern steps that you can see there, and uh, just an arrow to kind of help you uh, to pinpoint where that was. So where you see the arrow, that's where I was seated on those steps.
All right, so now we've moved from the outside of the uh, outside of the city into the uh, the inner part of the city. I'm standing there at the western wall. Uh, really neat experience to be able to to stand there and to be able to go up to the western wall. Uh, even today, Jews spend a lot of time at the western wall uh, praying and. Uh, we had the opportunity to write prayers on little slips of paper and uh, to be able to insert those into the wall. And I wish I would have taken a close-up so that you could see that. I mean, probably thousands and thousands of pieces of paper that have been uh, just crammed into the crevices there of the wall. And uh, again, this is where uh, Jews today will go and, uh, and pray. So it was a pretty, pretty, busy, pretty, pretty busy place when we were there. Uh, that day. This is a picture on top of the Temple Mount. Uh, nothing uh, special about that picture other than just it was on, on top of the Temple Mount. So I took that uh, and the scripture for uh, Tuesday comes from Matthew 21, 23 through 27 and then Matthew 22, 15 through 22. Again, uh, for time's sake, we're not going to be able to look at all of the events that you see on the handout there. But I would encourage you to, to later go back and just look at these different events and you can, can read through all of those and kind of see how this comes together. And one of the things you'll note with what we're going to look at here is the confrontation with the Pharisees. As we've been going through Mark's gospel, studying verse by verse, uh, the study we began, Servant and Savior, in March of last year, uh, we've seen the Pharisees time and time again uh, come into uh, to, to conflict with the disciples and trying to stir up trouble, and, and you see that unfold here, especially during the Passion Week. So these are the verses for uh, Tuesday. When he entered the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came to him while he was teaching them and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John was from what source, from heaven or from men? And they began reasoning among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the people, for they all regard John as a prophet. And answering Jesus, they said, we do not know. He also said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Then the Pharisees went and plotted together how they might trap him in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and that you are truthful and teach the way of God in truth, and defer to no one, for you are not partial to any. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to give a poll tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their malice and said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the poll tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And hearing this, they were amazed, and leaving him they went away. The city of Jerusalem was crowded for the Passover, the most important religious festival of the Hebrew people. The narrow streets were teeming with people and animals. There was a mood of celebration. The hard-working agricultural people eagerly looked forward to the feast days, especially Passover. According to tradition, everyone who possibly could went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. People came from all parts of the country, mostly on foot. The Hebrew festivals were landmarks of their faith, anniversaries of their salvation. Jesus came to Jerusalem for the Passover with his parents as a boy of 12. The week in the holy city would be one remembered always. And now the Lord Jesus had returned to Jerusalem for the last time. 
And again, it was Passover. He went to the temple and began teaching. And as had happened over and over during the three years of his earthly ministry, the people were drawn to him and were amazed at his compelling message about God and his love. The priests and Pharisees, however, were angered by his teaching and by his popularity. They decided to try and trap him with his own words. So while Jesus was teaching, the chief priests and elders came to him. By what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? I also will ask you a question. And if you tell me the answer, I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it, from heaven or from men? If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we are afraid of the people, for all hold that John was a prophet. We cannot tell. Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Later in the day, the rulers of the temple sent some learned Pharisees and Herodians to question Jesus and try again to discredit him. Master, we know that you are true and teach the way of God in truth and care for no man, for you do not regard the position of man. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to, to Caesar? Why not? Why do you tempt me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. Whose likeness and inscription is this? Caesar's. Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. All right, Wednesday, uh, according to Dr. Wilmington, is a day of silence. Now, uh, there are some that believe that other events happened on this day, like the religious leaders uh, plotted against Jesus. Uh, some will say that uh, the Olivet Discourse took place. And while we're not, you know, getting all hung up on specifically what day it is, uh, the, the purpose in all of this is just to give you just a general overview of all of the events leading up to uh, the cross and the resurrection. So again, uh, I hope you'll uh, take that into consideration as you move through this. And keep in mind that, that all of these outlines, uh, all of these charts that we look at were created by, by fallible human beings. Uh, but the Word of God we know is inspired, infallible, and inerrant. And that's the hope that we have. So let's move on to the next day, Thursday. If you'll notice on the left-hand side of your screen there, it says the room of the Last Supper. Uh, now, I don't know if this was the specific room where the Last Supper took place or not, but it was in this general vicinity. We had the opportunity to, uh, to, to travel there and to, uh, to take this in. And uh, these, are the, these are the events that, that happened on Thursday from Luke chapter 22 verses 22 through 38. This is the preparation for uh, the Passover meal, the, uh, the events in the upper room. Uh, then Jesus en route to Gethsemane, uh, moving back through the Kidron Valley over to the, the Mount of Olives. And uh, then he's in Gethsemane, and he's preparing uh, for what's uh, just around the corner the next day on Friday. So these are the scriptures from Thursday.
Luke 22, beginning in verse 22, For indeed the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. They began to discuss among themselves which of them it might be who was going to do this thing. And there arose also a dispute among them to which one of them was regarded to be the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are called benefactors. But it is not this way with you. But the one who is greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the servant. For who is greater, the one who reclines at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I grant you that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. But he said to him, Lord, with you I am ready to go both to prison and to death. And he said, I say to you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied me three times that you know me. Verse 35, And he said to them, When I sent you out without money belt and bag and sandals, you did not lack anything, did you? They said, No, nothing. And he said to them, But now whoever has a money belt is to take it along, likewise also a bag. And whoever has no sword is to sell his coat and buy one. For I tell you that this which is written must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with transgressors. For that which refers to me has its fulfillment. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. The greatest one among you must be like the youngest. And the leader must be like the servant. For who is greater, the one who sits down to eat or the one who serves? The one who sits down, of course. But I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me all through my trials. And just as my father has given me the right to rule, so I will give you the same right. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones to rule over the twelve tribes of Israel. Then there is no traitor. Simon, Simon, behold. Satan has desired to test all of you. To separate the good from the bad as a farmer separates the wheat from the chaff. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back to me, you must strengthen your brethren. Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and to die I tell with you, you. Peter, the cock will not crow this day before that you shall thrice deny that you know me. When I sent you out without purse or bag or shoes, did you lack anything? No. Not a thing. But now whoever has a purse or a bag must take it. And whoever has no sword must sell his mantle and buy one. For I tell you, it is written in the scriptures, and he was reckoned among the transgressors. And what was written about me is coming true. Look, here are two swords, Lord. That is enough. All right. On to Friday. Check out the picture you see on the display there. That's uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
And uh, you can probably tell by looking at the olive tree just how massive that tree is. It's believed that some of these trees uh, date back to 1,500 years, even some of the roots back to 2,000 years ago. Uh, so uh, now keep in mind also that over the course of history, there have been, uh, been fires in this area as well. So I can't say that that tree was there 2,000 years ago, but obviously some of the roots were. And uh, it's just a, an amazing sight to take in, to stand right there in the Garden of Gethsemane. So again, from the Garden of Gethsemane, you can look right over down through the Kidron Valley, and you can see the, uh, the city of Jerusalem and the Eastern Gate that I pointed out to you just a few moments ago. Just another picture inside the, uh, the garden there. And I uh, had to get a... A selfie there in the garden. So that's another picture in the, the Garden of Gethsemane. This is really interesting. This is, uh, this is a remarkable site. This is uh, Caiaphas' house, uh, the high priest. And uh, if you'll look on the left there, I don't think I zoomed in here. No, I didn't. Um, the steps that you see on the left there those are believed to have been the, the steps that Jesus actually walked on when he would have le uh, been led from the Garden of Gethsemane uh, through the Kidron Valley over to Caiaphas' house. Uh, and just to think about the fact that Jesus walked right there on those steps. That's one of the things that was so remarkable to me when I was in Israel. Probably one of my favorite places was the Sea of Galilee. And just being able to walk around the Sea of Galilee and thinking, hey, Jesus perhaps walked right here where I'm walking. But we know for, for, for pretty, pretty, cer pretty certain that these are the steps that, that Jesus walked on. And uh, also, uh, there's a dungeon in Caiaphas' house. Again, I didn't pull that picture up. I should have done that. But uh, that's uh, believed to have been the dungeon that Jesus would have been held in. Uh, when he was taken over to the high priest. And uh, we got to walk down in that dungeon. Uh, it's amazing. Amazing to think uh, just what happened there. So those are, again, the events on Thursday. That takes us to Friday. Friday, we know today as Good Friday. It wasn't Good Friday then. Uh, it was a horrible Friday. But uh, the scriptures we're going to look at are John 19, 17, and 18. And you'll see on Friday on your handout there, unfair trials and the crucifixion. And over on the right-hand side, again, for time's sake, we can't dive into this, but the right-hand section of the handout says the crucifixion of Christ. You can see uh, some of the, uh, the details of what unfolded there beginning at 9 a.m. till noon and then uh, at, uh, at 3 p.m., and scriptures that tie in with that as well. So John 19, 17, and 18. They took Jesus, therefore, and he went out, bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two other men, one on either side, and Jesus in between. Now you can't really make it out uh, too well with the picture that I have, but that is uh, the place of the skull. Uh, this is actually... Uh, um, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Gordon's Calvary is what it's referred to as. And uh, for time's sake, we can't dive into the story behind that. But uh, you can write that down and actually look that up on, uh, on Google and find some information about Gordon's Calvary. But uh, a better picture of this, which you'll be able to see if you search for it on the Internet, you can actually see what, what looks in this general vicinity here. It's kind of right here. You can kind of see like eye sockets and a nose, but over time uh, it's deteriorated. But if you find an older picture, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about there. I mean, it looks literally like a skull. But um, it's a really neat place.
Forgive them, Father. I know not what they do. He has saved others. Let him save himself. Saturday also is a day of silence. We know that Jesus would have, have been buried in the tomb. Uh, I bet Satan was having a field day, uh, throwing a party, and thinking that he had uh, conquered, that he was victorious. But uh, Sunday was just around the corner. So let's move right along. Sunday, Resurrection Day. Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. Verse 24 says, But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothing. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here. But he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James also the other women with them were telling these thing telling th these things to the apostles but these words appeared to them as nonsense and they would not believe them but peter got up and ran to the tomb stooping and looking in he saw the linen wrappings only and he went away to his home marveling at what had happened to us, angels shining like the sun, and said to us, why do you look for the living among the dead? It's true. Believe us. Believe us. We saw them. Go and see for yourself. The tomb was empty. Our Lord was gone. Peter, you must believe us.
there it is. Hey, whether you know it or not, it's empty. The tomb is empty. Praise the Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I saw it right there. I saw the door. saw the sign on the door. He is not here, for he is risen. This is actually a picture of the garden tomb. And we had an opportunity to uh, spend some time there in the garden. What a, a nice, uh, quiet place. Uh, we were able to observe the Lord's Supper there. And then we were able to, uh, to look here at the garden tomb. All right, well, I hope and pray that's been an encouragement to you. Again, this is one of my uh, favorite Bible studies to do. I uh, compiled this and put this together a number of years ago. But uh, since my trip to Israel in 2015, it's been really neat to be able to incorporate some of the pictures from that trip. And then along with the, uh, the Jesus video uh, film. And, and you may be wondering right now, or you perhaps noticed this towards the beginning, uh, not only did I read the scriptures, but I also showed you the video that had the scriptures in them as well. And there's a purpose for that. Uh, I'm a visual learner. I, I can hear something and learn. But if I'm able to, to hear something and then see that, that helps me to learn uh, and, and to learn even more. So that was one of the reasons behind having the scripture read and then the video to go along with it so that you can actually see that. Uh, if you have any questions about anything you saw tonight, uh, feel free to reach out. You can message me on uh, Facebook Messenger here. I'm going to type my email address over here now. Uh, if you have any questions at all, hey, maybe you're watching tonight and, uh, and you're not yet a Christian, but you just happen to be scrolling through and saw this on uh, somebody's news feed and you clicked on it and you said, hey, I want to check that out and see what that is. So if you're watching tonight and you have any questions at all about what it means to follow Jesus, you're uncertain of your eternity, uh, you don't know if you're in a relationship with Jesus right now or not, you're not really sure about the church and what the church is all about and you hear often that the church is full of hypocrites, and while that's true, there's hypocrites everywhere, no doubt. If we're honest, we've been hypocritical ourselves, amen? I'll be the first to admit that. Uh, but, but don't let, listen to me, listen to me carefully, don't let somebody else or something that somebody has done keep you from Jesus. If you don't hear anything else tonight, know that God loves you, and God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins, to be buried in that tomb and to rise from the grave on the third day. And if you have questions about that, please don't hesitate to reach out. I promise you, I will not beat you over the head with my Bible. My goal is simply to point you to truth. So I, I hope and pray that uh, if you have questions, you'll reach out. For those of you who are believers, thank you. I love you. Uh, and uh, thank you for being a part of this tonight. Let me hop over and say hey to some folks that have joined us this evening. And uh, let's see, uh, Andrea, good to see you. Thank you for your comments there. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Ashley, thank you for tuning in as well and being a part of this. Uh, Betty, good to see you tonight. Uh, Roger and Cindy, thank you all for tuning in. Let me make my screen a little bit bigger here so I can see. Uh, let's see, Debbie and Mr. George, thank you for, jo uh, for joining and being a part of this tonight as well. Miss Sharon, uh, good to see you on. Hope you and Mr. Bobby are doing well. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, there's Aunt Susie. Good to see you on tonight. Thank you for tuning in as well. Kathy, thank you for joining and being a part of this. Uh, Suzanne, thank you for, for tuning in and watching as well. Uh, Brooke and uh, Cliff, good to see you all. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Dennis and Sherry, thank you for tuning in as well and being a part of this. John, thank you and Valerie and uh, the boys for tuning in. Let's see who else. Uh, Mr. Benny and Miss Beebe, thank you all for joining us tonight, for being a part of this. Let's see, uh, Laverne, good to see you tonight. Thank you for tuning in, being a part of our study together. Uh, Richard and Tammy, thank you for tuning in. Rusty and Vicky, good to see you all tonight as well. Uh, Pastor Jimmy and Miss Linda, thank you all for tuning in. Miss Dolores, good to see you. Mr. Gerald and Miss Sylvia, thank you as well. Appreciate that. Let's see if there's anybody else I missed. Uh, Mr. Barry and Miss Connie, good to see y'all as well. I think that's it. Everybody that commented, 
Well, again, thank you for being a part of this. If this has been a blessing and an encouragement to you, if you'll like this video, then share it on your Facebook uh, page. Hopefully it'll be an encouragement and a blessing to some others. Uh, love you all. Hope you have a good rest of the week. Uh, praise the Lord that He uh, spared us tonight with the severe weather forecast. Uh, we uh, praise Him for that. And uh, we're looking forward to Resurrection Sunday. If you do not have a home church, invite you to join us 7 a.m. on the lawn for our sunrise service, 11 a.m. for our worship service. It'll be in person as well as online. Love you all. Hope you have a good rest of the week. And Lord willing, we'll see you soon.